I wanted to do a follow-up today on the uh, murder of Amber Spradlin in Floyd County, Kentucky. It's been a year since this young woman was murdered. Brutally murdered is how I describe it. I just want to say that as of today, a year since this took place, no one's been arrested. I don't think even any charges have been filed. Now, the family of Amber Spradlin did file a wrongful death civil lawsuit against the man, the homeowner. And I'm going to read a little bit about that. In a year's time, five people who were known and admitted to having been in that home that night that this woman was murdered in Floyd County and no charges have been brought against any of them. And what we keep hearing repeated and regurgitated in the media and on social media is that the state police are waiting for the crime lab to come back with the DNA and they want to make sure everything's in the ducks are all in a row. This doesn't make it any easier on the community and the people and the family, especially of this woman who went there that night to have a little bit of fun, to enjoy the uh, friendships and to spend time with these people who had invited her to go along. And she ends up having her life ripped away from her in a very brutal manner. And nothing's been done. And some people who, uh, you know, who carry weight, I'll, I'll put it that way, in the county, prosecutors and police officers and the mayor and other people, and this all comes down to this 911 call that no one responded to. That the homeowner, this McKinney, gets on the phone and says, everything's okay, we don't need your help. And nobody, okay, we'll take your word for it. Everything's fine. A few hours later, after a cleanup had taken place, and it's, rec it's suggested that a cleanup took place, an attempted cleanup, and cameras were removed from the home, and phones were, uh, you know, done away with, wiped clean, uh, messages and that's that type of thing and the person who is believed to have been responsible for the actual murder was not at the home when the police finally came out after the second 911 call comes in where it's reported very nonchalantly like well I found a dead woman in my home not a woman who's been brutally stabbed 11 to or more times in her face, throat, and neck to the point that such a brutal uh, crime had been committed that the knife had broken off inside her head. Didn't, didn't give that detail on the 911 call that the police actually finally decided to respond to. So I'm going to read this. It's from Lexington 18, Lex 18 News. June 18th, 2024. This was, this was published and dated June 4th of 2024. Today is the 18th, and it is the one-year anniversary of this murder. On June 18th, 2024, it will be one year since relatives say Amber Spradlin was stabbed to death after partying with acquaintances. Now, I don't like that. Now, some people might say that gives a good description of what was going on that night. I don't like that because it it leaves this kind of image in your in the reader's mind that this woman was out just that this was something typical for her. It's my understanding and according to what all I've read and heard about her that this wasn't something that was typical for her. She had only recently started this job at the Brick House that was owned by the mother of the, sus the suspect here, the public, public suspect, um, uh, and the, the Michael McKinney, who was the homeowner, they co-owned this restaurant, and she had started working there recently. 
and had been invited back to a, an after party at a different location that was also owned by members of this same family, a place called Seasons Inn. So they had all left Brick House after her shift ended that night and the restaurant was closing. They all went to this other place. They had a few drinks there. I don't know the details. I'm, I was told that some of the people that were there were quite intoxicated. But they end up back at this man's home, this Michael McKinney, this dentist and business owner. So when they say she was partying with friends, it, it makes it in my mind and I picture someone who did that quite a lot so it kind of paints the victim in a bad light and I, I don't think that they should have worded it that way but the article goes on to read her body was found in the home of prominent Prestonsburg dentist Dr. Michael McKinney who has neither been charged with any crime or is named as a suspect no one has been charged or named. But with the statute of limitations running out, attorneys representing Spradlin's estate filed a 23-page wrongful death lawsuit that names the person they believed killed Spradlin. It's a step in the right direction, and we think it's going to fall like dominoes, said Dr. Debbie Hall, who was Spradlin's cousin, and, and also she is leading the way in this fight for justice for Amber. In the lawsuit, attorneys allege that Spradlin was stabbed multiple times by defendant M.K. M.K. is the doctor's son, Dr. Michael McKinney's son. The lawsuit states defendants at the residence failed to protect Spradlin, failed to take immediate action to help help her or to get her any kind of help. Uh, it's believed that they removed security cameras that had been installed around the home prior to this. And they removed these cameras before the second 911 call was made. Now, they say the first 911 call is believed not to have involved Spradlin, but someone else. That the caller called and stated that someone there was very intoxicated and bleeding and needed assistance. But the homeowner, Dr. Michael McKinney, takes the phone and says, it's not as bad as they think, it's okay, I've got it under control, I don't need any help. So if Amber Spradlin was not the person bleeding profusely who needed an ambulance at that time, who was? And was this person ever treated? Did, they, did this person ever go to a hospital after this and get treated for injuries? So it's believed that after this first call, Something took place that caused this M.K. McKinney to attack, brutally attack Amber. If that's the case, then nobody there, the doctor and the other person who was bleeding profusely that the 911 call was about, the person who made the 911 call to begin with, none of those people can say that they did not witness this attack on her because they were awake at the time of the first 911 call. Did Amber herself make the initial 911 call? Is it believed that the person needing assistance was her friend that she was there with, this Roy kid? I don't have the answers to that. There's rumors and speculation and hearsay and I'm sure others out there that may hear this do know the answers. And if they want to comment and fill that void. But they cannot say that they were not aware of this brutal murder. Are they going to then say, well, once the, 911 call, the first 911 call ended, we all just turned our backs and went away. And then this attack took place. 
is it possible that the person injured that Amber was trying to assist them and get them some help? And maybe she was angry that the doctor had ended the 911 call and said, we don't need anybody. Maybe she was raising her voice and maybe that was their excuse for attacking her because they thought they were going to get in trouble because maybe they had attacked this other person already. The suit says local officials were negligent in the 911 service. In December of 2022, the Floyd County Physical Court voted to have the city of Prestonsburg take over the 911 services from the Kentucky State Police in Pikeville. On the day of Spradlin's death, a 911 call was made at 5.30 a.m. that Amber's family believes this took place before her death. They said it was about someone else being injured and intoxicated and that Dr. McKinney told dispatchers the situation was under control so the police didn't respond. No one went out. They said this was about someone else being injured and intoxicated. We feel like there's a very good possibility that Amber would still be alive right now if someone had gone out and checked on this 911 call. Attorneys are suing the city of Prestonsburg, the Prestonsburg City Police, along with the city's former mayor, Les Stapleton, and police chief for negligence for not responding to the call. The, the lawsuit alleges that Dr. McKinney called the then Prestonsburg Police Chief Randy Wood before making the next 911 call. The family questions why he did that. There's been rumors and hearsay that this police chief, Randy Wood, actually went out to the house before the, 911, the second 911 call was made. Did Dr. McKinney call him and say, can you come over to my house? There's a situation here. I need your advice. He also called um, and asked for legal advice from the prosecutor, from the county attorney, before calling 911. It's believed, and, and there's this good old boy system that is it's what it's called, and it's believed by the public, by a lot of people in the public, that these people were all covering, were all on the phone calling each other, trying to figure out what to say and what to do. And maybe he was advised to get rid of these cameras. Maybe he was advised to clean this place up. Get your son out of here before anybody comes out. What they're going to find when they show up is a woman dead and no evidence of who did it and no one around hovering over the body, covered in blood or whatever. Now, it's said that police chief, former police chief, Prestonsburg police chief Randy Wood and, my, and Dr. McKinney had phone conversation that morning before Dr. McKinney ever called 911. And people say that is very suspicious, that his first thought was to call the police chief. Hall, who said she is not an heir to the estate, this is Dr. Debbie Hall, said she is not an heir to the estate and the lawsuit is not about money. I've done this because I love Amber and someone needs to pay for what they did to her. The lawsuit seeks an unspecified amount of money to compensate the estate as well as punitive damages. And as it's happened in the past, sometimes civil cases, um, people are called to um, testify, they're called to give testimony, they're called to speak in court and defend themselves against the civil case. They have to also answer questions about the crime. And so when the criminal case, if ever, takes place, 
they can't recant their stories and they can't go back and say a different tell something different than what they told on the stand or in the civil case that will be used as proof and I'm just looking to see if I find any other stories about this. Now, this is from the Pike County newspaper, the Appalachian News Express. In what may be considered a major development in the murder of Amber Spradlin, a civil lawsuit was filed on behalf of the family. However, we should all be cautious with the lawsuit's content. The lawsuit filed by a Lexington lawyer on behalf of the family names the defendants, including Dr. Michael McKinney, his son M.K., Roy Kidd, former police chief Randy Woods, the city of Prestonsburg, the county of Floyd County, the former mayor Les Stapleton, two magistrates, the county judge, Robbie, Robbie Williams, Robert Williams, the owner of the Seasons Inn and um, unknown defendants. They allege that Dr. McKinney's son, M.K., stabbed Amber multiple times at the residence. The suit says that M.K. and another party, Roy Kidd, were overserved and were very intoxicated at the restaurant that Dr. McKinney owns. It says the defendants failed to take immediate action after the 911 call and possibly removed cameras from the property. Now, the allegations are that Roy Kidd, who it was said was a good friend of Amber, may have been a better friend to one of these McKinney's and I'll just leave it at that because um, it's believed that cameras were removed from the property. They allege that MK left the scene of the crime and that some defendants covered up or attempted to cover up the crime scene. The civil lawsuit has many allegations. The, the question is, are the allegations substantiated? By presenting to the court a pleading, written motion, or other paper, filing, submitting, and signing, an attorney or unrepresented party certifies to the best of their knowledge it is not being presented by any other purpose, such as to harass or cause unnecessary delay. Unnecessary delay in what? The investigation of the crime? I think it's pretty evident to most of the public that the delay is ongoing for some reason. I mean, DNA... Yes, they want to make sure that everything comes back. Whoever was holding that knife and it broke off in that woman's head possibly could have cut themselves and their DNA may have been found on her body even though they attempted to wipe away the blood and other evidence, but it, there could have been blood in her hair. There could have been blood inside of her cat, her facial you know, the where the knife was lodged could have been on the knife. So it just goes on to talk more about the evidence in the case and what is required for the court. I have stated in prior columns when speaking to authorities. This is Jeff. This is Jeff Vanderbeck, the publisher. I have stated in prior columns that in speaking with authorities, DNA testing is still the hurdle. We know that some DNA is back. The other testing is still being processed. The state's crime lab is backed up by almost two years in DNA testing. Which 
The question is, why is the state's crime lab so backed up? Does the state care so little about victims that they won't do a better job of hiring people to process these DNA cases? Kentucky's crime lab employees, some who have master's degrees, are paid some of the lowest, while other states start out paying their lab technicians who do this in the crime labs $80,000. Kentucky only pays in the low 40000 So it's probably hard to hire people to work when they can go to West Virginia, Ohio, Tennessee, Virginia, or any other state and make double the money that Kentucky would pay them to do the same job. So I think Andy Bashir and some of the people in the legislature of Kentucky needs to step up and do a better job. I honestly wonder whether Amber's murder will ever get solved. This is Jeff Vanderbeck. Is there too much money and too many votes at stake? If the killer or killers are exposed, who will go down for the other crimes? The whole thing is a mess and a black eye for the community. Whatever happened is tragic, and if the allegations are true, and this killer or killers are not taken off the streets, the same thing may happen again. The entire political landscape needs to change in Floyd County. Well, apparently it needs to change in the whole state of Kentucky. I mean, I'm sure that some of these uh, politicians and the mayor and uh, the chief of police and the um, local DA, county attorney, and some of these other people probably earn more than the crime lab technicians in Kentucky are earning. Maybe they need to reverse that. Maybe if the crime lab technicians got paid more and more people were hired and the backlog was uh, loosened up a little bit, and some of these prosecutors and some of these high-paid um, officials had their pay, their salaries reduced to $40,000 or less a year. Maybe there would be less crime. Maybe there would be less cover-ups of crimes. But that's where everything stands today. The case of Amber Spradlin is still an unsolved um no one has been arrested. No charges have been filed. These people walk the streets. They go on about their daily lives. Um, there's been nothing to change their lives other than these allegations. And people, maybe a few people, a handful of people, have stopped frequenting their businesses but I'm sure Dr. McKinney still gets his share of patients. The restaurant still has people coming there to eat. They have events on the weekends where they have music and people show up. And these people continue to live their lives as they did before. This young woman, this, this Amber Spradlin who went there, this innocent person who was in their home trusting them, as a as a guest in their home and was stabbed to death and some of the comments some of the commentary coming from the side of the support for this family and these people involved in 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 these lawsuits this lawsuit are very sarcastic demeaning um it's almost taunting the, the supporters of Amber Spradlin. It, it's really, it goes to show you that 
politics and the good old boy system and political buddy buddies covering for each other, golf buddies, everybody going to the club and to the meetings and to the after hours get togethers or whatever else that the suspicions of the public are becoming are coming true that a normal woman a man anyone just living their normal life can become a victim of a brutal murder and possibly a cover-up and the excuse is Well, we don't have any evidence because the crime lab is backed up for two years. Well, we're at year number one right now. So are they telling us we're looking at another year before evidence is brought forth? Or are they going to come out later and say, well, you know, we processed the DNA and we couldn't come to any conclusion as to who committed the murder? Are these people going to get away with this? Does not one single person who was involved in this have a conscience? We know MK has no conscience. We know apparently his parents have none. And we know the lengths that a parent will go to to protect their child, regardless of what their child may do in life. So I just wanted to come back and give my own commentary. These are my own thoughts and opinions. What I've read from the websites, from the news articles about the lawsuit, but the rest is my own personal opinion. I don't know that this M.K. McKinney was the actual murderer. It's suspected that he was. Things have been said. People have talked rumors and allegations, finger pointing. And it all comes back to him. And the cover up was probably the parents trying to protect the child. But who was protecting Amber? Thanks for watching.